because we are not stupid and we refuse to be treated like children. We are not hate mongers. We're not racist. We're not violent. We're just not going to stand for it any longer. We don't trust those who are in the establishment for power. We don't trust them, we, nor should we trust them. I say on my television and radio show all the time, do not take my word for it. I am not your guide to life. I am a guy trying to figure out my own life, trying to figure out my own country, trying to figure out my own salvation. I'll tell you along the way what I've found, but find it out for yourself. Don't, don't take anybody's word. As Thomas Jefferson said, question with boldness even the very existence of God, for if there be a God, he must surely rather honest questioning over blindfolded fear. This is, this is not, this is not your church's faith. It's yours. It's not some university's history. It's yours. It's not the Washington's constitution. Damn it, it's yours. Own it. Put your faith in God. Put your faith in yourself under God. Put your faith in the dreamers and the doers and the entrepreneurs of this country because America's, Americans always find the way out. Now here's what I ask. I started something on 828 and uh, the media missed it. Slowly. <laughs> it's the 40 day and 40 night challenge. I ask you to take this seriously. I know it's something that you can sit in and watch on TV or hear me talk about, or you can sit here and go, that's a great idea. You know, honey, we should do that. That's because that's what I do. I'm the biggest slug you've ever met. That's a really good idea. We shouldn't set our house on fire. And then I'll be out flicking matches at the house. And my wife will go, didn't we say we shouldn't set our house on fire? Oh, yeah. This is something that I beg of you. I pray that you will do these things. Thomas Jefferson was a, he was a fascinating dude. He was a complex, you know, they call him the American Sphinx. It's appropriate that he's a mystery, he's a puzzle, because he loved puzzles. He, he loved codes. That's who he was. He said, if you ever really want to pass on something of importance, don't write it down. Encode it in architecture because then it's lasting. I remember walking in the streets of New York, not that I was a street walker in New York, no, media's, no. I was, I was in New York one afternoon, and this was about two years ago, and I couldn't figure out how we're gonna get out of this mess. And I, I'm thinking to myself, how are we gonna, how, how, what is the solution? You know the founder saw it. What is the solution? And I'm walking in the street and I'm thinking this and I just stop. And I looked up and I went, and this is not unusual in New York just to talk to yourself out loud. <laughs> so nobody looked and I went, thank you. The solution is right in front of us. I believe it's the code of the Constitution. It's not like somebody was, you know, typing it out and the, you know, Ben came up to him and said, uh, you better change the font size. It's not all going to fit on the page if you leave it at that font size. Oh. They made the first three words, we the people bigger, for dummies like me. It's like a constitution for dummies. They knew we would get lost and we would say, what is the way out? The people. We are the last resort. We are the last piece. If all three branches start to fail, it's up to us. 
Now, what do we do with that? The first thing we do is we grab everybody. If this is not some sort of historic turnout for Republicans, Democrats, Independents, for America, if you're not freaked out by what's happening in our country one way or the other, what will freak you out? What will get you to the polls? You get everybody you know. I don't care who they're voting for, you get them to the polls. It's time for Americans to understand the last cord has been pulled, and it's the fourth cord. We the people, we are the last line of defense. If we don't step to the plate, it is over. But I have great confidence, I know Americans will step to the plate. They're not stupid. That was the code, we the people. The last line in the Declaration of Independence, I don't know if it's a code, but I choose to look at it that way because I believe it's the next step. It's what we must do, each of us, to change our country. The last line is, with firm reliance on divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. I have always loved that line because it's so beautiful. It is just amazing. What makes it beautiful is they meant it. But what does it mean? In the next 40 days and 40 nights, I want you to write this down and keep it in front of you. I want you to know this inside and out. I want you to be able to explain in great depth what each one of these words means with firm reliance on divine providence. First of all, what is divine providence? Divine providence is standing in the flow. That's all it is. A lot of people call it coincidence. It's not. You're standing in the flow of God. God is not on our side. We must do the things in our own life to assure that we are on His side. When we are on His side, coincidence starts to happen. It's divine providence. It's like you're standing in the river with bait and a hook. And you're like, whoa, I went fishing. It was the wildest coincidence. I was just standing there in the river with a, a pole and hook and bait. And a fish came out. I caught a fish. What a wild coincidence. No, dummy. You're in the flow. You're in the river. Do this. For the next 30 days, do not, or 40 days, do not dismiss anything as a coincidence. Don't. Pursue it. Figure out what it is. You were born at this time for a reason. You have a job to do. I don't know what it is. It's certainly not strapping explosives to yourself. Beyond that, I don't know what it is. It's for you to figure out. And believe me, if you don't listen to the coincidence of life, pretty soon, God just starts kicking you in the head. I know, it hurts. <laughs> He's got big shoes. Firm reliance on divine providence. Remember, divine providence, a distortion of divine providence is manifest destiny. After our founders all died, divine providence went away and manifest destiny came. What is manifest destiny? Get out of my way. I'm on a mission from God. Uh-oh, trouble. That's bad. But standing in the flow of God, divine providence, with firm reliance. Why firm reliance? Why not just, why didn't they just write, with faith in God, we mutually, because faith is not enough and God doesn't explain it. Look for the coincidence that will lead you forward. And faith isn't strong enough. It must be firm reliance. I can have faith in a lot of things, but only in God can I have firm reliance. I know this to be true that if we're on the side and in the flow of God, things will happen that will lead us out. Is there anyone in this auditorium